Hello, fellow rebel capitalists. Hope you're well. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. Super excited to get into your questions today. Want to encourage you to check out rebelcapitalistlive.com. You can get your tickets to the next Rebel Capitalist Live in Orlando, May 12th to the 14th. We've got my good buddies, Peter Schiff, Mike Maloney, Lynn Alden, Chris McIntosh, Robert Barnes, Brent Johnson, just to name a few. You got to check out the website. Get your tickets ASAP. Because as we get closer to the event, they gradually go up in price. Uh, as a lot of you know that might watch the Rebel Capitalist channel, we're switching things around here. And uh, I think we're making a lot of improvements, but we're switching up cameras and getting this 4K camera that I'm looking at all dialed in. So tonight's just going to be straight here on my laptop, which is why you got all the shadows on my face and whatnot. So you'll have to forgive the lighting, but the content is going to be as awesome as always. <laughs> All right, let's check out your questions, see what we got. Numero uno, since the U.S. dollar is stronger against other currencies, what happens to gold price for other countries when the U.S. goes into hyperinflation? Well, I mean, it depends. Uh, well, let, let me think here. So you're saying that the U.S., okay, so the dollar goes through hyperinflation. And what would happen to the... Well, the gold that well, you know, the gold price in other currencies that 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 isn't necessarily tied to the dollar. So, let's think this through for a moment. We go back and uh, I would guess since twenty twenty one or so, gold might be down, or yeah, I'd have to go back and look at a chart on it. I, I haven't looked at a gold chart in quite some time. You guys probably know better than I do, but it, it hasn't really gone up to the rate that most people expected due to the U.S. CPI. But I think to your point, if you look at gold in other currencies, it's actually done very well, and it's stayed up with the rate of inflation because it is priced in dollars, and those fiat currencies have gone down relative to the dollar. So I guess you could have, uh, gold, let's see in dollars, gold appreciating to a large degree, but the dollar going down in value. So there might be some offsetting like counterbalances. I think the bottom line, my best answer is going to be, there's a lot of variables and the reason I own gold is just to maintain your purchasing power in any currency over long periods of time. If you look at just two weeks, two months, even sometimes two years, obviously gold doesn't do that. But if you look at 50 years, if you look at 10 years, it's it's most likely going to maintain that purchasing power. So I'm not sure what it would do. I mean, there's I think there's too many variables to... even speculate but my base case considering the last 5000 years is regardless of the currency gold is going to maintain its purchasing power and based on kind of the daily fluctuations the monthly the yearly fluctuations and cross currents involved sometimes it could be a little more sometimes it could be a little less i think the mistake with gold is buying it to get rich so many people and I think a lot of the gold bugs would fall into this category. They they buy gold because there's going to be this hyperinflation and you, you know the story. But I don't know that that's a great reason to buy gold um, as far as getting rich due to hyperinflation because I think it would just mostly maintain its purchasing power. And then all of a sudden, think about it, you got to pay taxes. So, I mean, I don't know that gold bugs have really given that one too much of a thought. Let's just say it goes to 50,000 due to some extreme inflation in the United States. Okay, let's say you bought it 1,000. Great. And you sell, now you got to pay taxes. 
cap gains. Okay, well, uh, if it just went up with the rate of inflation, now your purchasing power went down significantly. So, again, I just look at gold as everyone should own it. It's insurance. You buy it never to sell it. And you just hang on to it to give it to your your, your family and uh, just to, to grow and, and build your wealth. I, I don't look at it as a way to get rich like it's at 2000 now and somehow we're going to have like 10% inflation in the United States and gold's still going to go to 50,000. I mean, maybe, but I, I don't really see that as a base case. I think if you want to get rich with gold, you buy the miners. Completely different asset class in my opinion. You made an interesting video about the Fed chasing the two year. Is it possible it's actually just because the market predicting Fed actions and prices pricing them in before the market adjusts? I don't know that that would have a massive impact on the two year because you're quite a ways out. I think that's going to affect the T bills, meaning less than a year. It's going to affect the three month. It's going to affect the one month, but two years, you're getting quite a ways out there. So I definitely think that's part of it. But when we look at cross currents, just like the previous question with gold, I think you got to ask yourself, not only what are the cross currents with the two year, but what is most likely going to be the strongest cross current. And I, I don't know that's it. So I think that's my final answer. Just thinking it through out loud here. I totally get what you're saying, but I think that's going to be a much stronger cross current at the front end of the curve. Do I have any thoughts on the creation of more digital space to allow for more volume of currency? Do I have any thoughts? The creation of more digital space to allow for more volume of currency and to open more plumbing for those currency flows? No. I don't know that you'd need more digital space because all you're talking about with an increase in currency is just increasing a number on a ledger. So it, I think if I'm understanding your question correctly, it, it you could almost say, do we need more, do you need more digital space to go into your Excel spreadsheet and change the first number and the first row and column from a 10 to an 11? I, I'm not a computer engineer, but I, I don't think you'd need any more quote unquote digital space for that. You're just changing a number from 10 to 11. And so, and that's all currency is at the end of the day, as far as what most people consider quote unquote money. That's just the balance in their checking account. So all that is, is a number and a network of ledgers. And I, I don't see why they'd need more digital space. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, yeah, I'm trying to think this through out loud to see another angle to your question, but I don't, in order to increase currency the way most people know it, digital currency, I, I don't think you need it to do anything regarding the plumbing. I mean, I, I guess maybe you're talking about the swap lines that the Fed has set up with foreign central banks to get dollars outside of the United States, that could be one where you would uh, you could cr increase the flows with a different type of plumbing, but that would be kind of the central bank digital currency model where you're consolidating a lot of the 
ledgers that are in the commercial banking network onto the central bank's balance sheets. So there could be settlement between banks very quickly, very efficiently. And therefore, maybe increase those currency flows. If you think it like to just water through the system and it's kind of getting um, clogged up and there's bottlenecks, that that is, and I hate to say there's something good about a central bank digital currency, but that is one thing that would improve, let's say, with a central bank digital currency is there would be almost zero bottlenecks, almost zero. Like you could transfer dollars from here down to Colombia, or assuming that they were on the same type of network, right? That, that they had the same, you could do it just instantly, just like Zelle. It would be just like Zelle. So that would be a benefit, but I think the costs far outweigh those benefits. <laughs> but as I think it through, that would be a way to kind of open up the taps, so to speak, get rid of some bottlenecks and make those flows more efficient. Is your thesis of late 2023 recession followed by resume rising commodity super cycle still intact? Well, I don't know that I have a, a timing on pretty much my prediction there, Brandon, and I make very few predictions as you guys know. I just kind of try to more educate people on how the, the system works and hopefully you can come to your own conclusions. But the one prediction I did make was that we would go through disinflation and that would, who knows how far down it goes, but I, I knew it would most likely come down from nine or 9.1 and, and go down lower in I thought the latter stages of 2022 and then into 2023. So I got that right. Now, what I got epically wrong was I didn't think they could raise above 2.5% on Fed funds. And obviously they proved me wrong. So I guess I don't want to throw out a prediction, but if I had to give you kind of my base case right now as to what my thesis would be, I think that would be pretty likely 2023 late 2023 recession because my view now is there were so many people on the recession side of the boat and usually when all those people are on that side of the boat it doesn't pan out so we need to wait for everyone to get on the no landing i don't know if you guys have heard this term in the mainstream media lately but we we're debating a soft landing or a hard landing. And now all of a sudden they're talking about no landing, meaning we won't even have a recession because employment is so incredible that we're not going to go into a recession at all. We're just going to go right straight into the next bull cycle or boom phase of the, uh, of the uh, economic cycle itself. So I don't, agree with that but i do think that we need to wait for everyone to get on that side of the boat on the on the no landing side of the boat and then knowing the market or the history of the market you guys understand when everyone gets on that side of the boat usually the market gives you the old rug pull and so how long will that take to for everyone to get over in that camp yeah probably next couple months it may it may be summer when when you get the old rug pull but that would be my base case and then it really depends as far as the next wave up in the commodity super cycle what the government's response is to the rug pull we'll call it <laughs> and if and how soft how hard is it is it a is it a Cerveza sickness type thing? Is it a GFC type thing? Or is it like a dot-com type thing? And we could be at the point now where it's like not possible to have just a soft landing, a normal mild recession, because the debts are just so high and everyone is just levered to the gills or levered to the hilt. What's the, 
anyway, you guys get what I'm trying to say there. So I think it's the speed at which the central bank, bank uh, central planners come in and try to pop, prop up the system. And that really depends on what asset prices are doing and how disorderly a decline is, especially in the S&P, because that's going to decline a lot faster than housing. Those are two biggies. And then the credit market as well. If that seizes up, they're going to come in. So I guess my answer there would be, it depends on their response as to when we get that next wave of the commodity super cycle. But they're, they're teeing it up right now. They're teeing it up because there's just no capital going into supply. It's still ESG. It's still don't invest. You know, let's do windfall profit tax with oil companies. They, they haven't learned their lesson, which would lead me to believe that they don't want to do what's right. It would lead me to believe that they have malicious intentions or intentions outside of what they claim when they discuss this with the media or in broad daylight. I think they have ulterior motives. But they're doing everything they can right now to constrict supply for the entire decade. So when you do get that next burst of artificial demand, whether it's stimmies, whether it's UBI, uh, whatever fiscal we get, then that's going to hit the wall of no more supply. Not literally, but a, a limited supply because we're just not investing in creating more fossil fuel or more energy because it's just politically incorrect. And unfortunately, the poor and the middle class are going to have to pay the price for those poor decisions or those malicious decisions, whichever you think is more accurate. <laughs> so reading the last part of your question, if so, seems logical to wait short-term fixed income with 4.5 to 6% yields until the turn. Yeah, you're not going to be able to really time it, though. I think you're going to be able to get some great opportunities with T-bills as people move to that side of the boat that's the no landing. Because then the no landing side of the boat means the Fed raises rates more and more and more. At least the market expectations are for the Fed to continue to increase rates. And that's going to bump those yields at the front end which gives you, I, I think, more of an opportunity. I mean, even if you don't have a crash, then, I mean, if you're getting 5 6% on a six-month T-bill, that's, that's, that's pretty good for your dry powder, in my opinion. What steps do you recommend if one wanted to relocate to Central or South America? You got to go there. Check it out. That's the only way to... To do it you can sit online or read blogs or watch videos all you want but at the end of the day you've just got to go there try the food meet the people go to the mall do the normal stuff do the touristy stuff and just see if you like it and i would go to the top five on your list and some of them you're not going to like some of them you're going to like more than others and just kind of go through a, a trial and error process. That's really the only way to do it. Which entity owns mortgage-backed securities purchased with debt notes? The Fed, or the, well, the Treasury does not own mortgage-backed securities. So I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about with debt notes, but but the Fed would, out of those two that you gave me, the Fed's the only one that's going to have mortgage-backed securities on their balance sheet. Why is the Federal Reserve pumping money into the Swiss banking system on top of U.S. banks? At, um, I'm not 
sure i think you might be referring to their dollar swap line that they have set up but i don't think there's been any real activity for quite some time so i haven't seen what you're referring to as far as the 2 a.m every single night the u.s banks and i haven't seen anything that would suggest that's what's happening Was Josh fired? No. Josh actually just came down to Medellin. He's staying in one of my my rental properties with uh, some of his buddies. We actually went out and played golf yesterday. Chairman Powell says he wants a low inflation, but his actions appear the opposite. Do you think his statements are red herring? I don't know that his actions would be the opposite. I mean, he's increased rates faster than any Fed chair I know. Now, he hasn't taken them as high, but he's increased them faster. And all of his rhetoric is trying to talk inflation down. So no, I, I don't think his actions would suggest that he doesn't want to defeat inflation. Yeah, I, I would disagree with that. I, I think that Jerome Powell absolutely, even behind the scenes, wants to defeat inflation for, for the simple fact that he's got a legacy. And so do you want to be remembered as Arthur Burns or do you want to be remembered as Paul Volcker? Easy choice, right? Would I buy a personal residence right now? Well, I'm assuming you're talking about in the United States. Mm. I mean, if I got a great deal, but that's probably not going to happen. Or, you know, who knows? Maybe I, you've got a kid that needs to be in a certain school district. So there's all these different factors. But just looking at the, the math, just the numbers? No. <laughs> no, I'd prefer to rent. I'd prefer to rent and just see how the yield curve plays out. Is there a point where government accumulates too much debt and will have to default on the debt somehow? Well, they're not they're not gonna do a normal default, like not pay people back, but obviously they could default in the form of paying people back currency units that have far less purchasing power than the ones they borrowed to begin with. Do you think real estate is more correlated with income or inflation or both? Well, it's going to be income because I think income is correlated with inflation. So, it, it, it's pretty much one and the same. So I would focus on incomes. I would focus on incomes and because that's going to be a basically uh, said another way. Income is kind of a, a derivative of inflation. So I would focus on price to income ratios, historic prices adjusted for inflation and interest rates. Okay, guys, bear with me. Just looking for the, the question. Do you see the markets going down 30% this year? I, I have no way to tell. I mean, that's, that's like trying to predict the weather six weeks out. or It's just, it's almost impossible. There are too many variables.
I would say that's what the yield curve is telling us, or that uh, I think that's going too far. The, the yield curve is suggesting this is a strong possibility. What do you think the best strategy is to create a community of like-minded people in today's environment? Well, you've just got to be yourself and go out there, create consistent content, talk, talk about what you're passionate about and look at the analytics and try to leverage the platform to the best of your ability to reach as many people as possible and to achieve whatever goals you have set up for yourself. There's no better time in history than today to build or reach a community of people, bring people together for a specific cause, freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. Obviously, for those of you who grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, it was a different game back then. This was almost impossible, what we're doing right now, other than just at conferences in front of large groups of people live, like face-to-face -face live. So we have immense amounts of opportunity here. And this is what makes me very optimistic that we don't have to go to war at the end of this fourth turning. This time it can be different because hopefully we can reach enough people. We can change the atmosphere. We can kind of be more in control of our own uh, destiny, if you will. And we can get off this path that we're on, the road to serfdom, if you will, or in this case, the, the road to inevitable war based on the principles of the fourth turning. Now you say, George, that's all nonsense. Okay. But if we're going to assume that's true and, and it, 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 one thing that we do know definitively by studying history is there is a cycle of hard times, create strong men, strong men, create good times, good times, create weak men and weak men create hard times. That is not debatable. It happens over and over and over and over and over and over and over. I mean, if you just read history, that's really just the story. That, throw in some war, some famine, some devaluation of the currency, some disease, and that's pretty much human history. <laughs> <laughs> right there in a nutshell. So regardless of what technology, we'll still go through that. It's just, I believe that if we can create enough content and good enough content to reach the normies, the average Joe and Jane, if we can wake up enough people, we'll still have to go through those cycles, but they, they won't have to be as extreme as maybe they were in the past. So that's the best strategy I can advise is just be yourself, create the type of content you're passionate about and create it consistently. And then look at the backend analytics, continue to iterate, do more of what works and less of what doesn't continue to throw things up against the wall to see what sticks and just do that over and over and over and over again. And always remember the one saying that I agree where, where I agree with Bill Gates <laughs> is where and I think this is his quote, where he said, most people overestimate what they can achieve in a year and they dramatically underestimate what they can achieve in five years. And I think that's very true. So just, uh, have, have high expectations. Make sure that you're getting outside of your comfort zone and pushing yourself, challenging yourself every day. But just realize that it's a marathon and it's definitely not a sprint. Do I like royalty companies? Yeah, I like them, but I'm not an expert here. For better advice on this, I would suggest 
looking at the content from my good buddy Jason Burrick, he really gets into the weeds there. Also, Lynn probably has. I'll just go ahead and give a, a cheap plug to, or a, a gratuitous plug for Rebel Capitalist Pro, the subscription service that I have with Lynn Alden and Chris McIntosh. I know they get into the weeds with the royalty companies as well. If you want to check that out, I think we still have like a dollar trial. You can do that at georgegammon.com forward slash pro. Or, but also check out Burrick's, Jason Burrick's content. From where do international entities get dollars to buy treasuries and if they can access dollars to buy treasuries? They need treasuries to have access to dollars. Okay, so they're going to make, they're going to have access to dollars by making profit. And those dollars are going to come into existence uh, in several different ways. Just because we are in a system now where there, the demand for collateral is much higher, it doesn't mean that there isn't currency creation with uh, no collateral. I think that still exists to some degree. And I mean, I think where you're going with this is, is if they have to have treasuries to get dollars, then how can the dollars be created to buy the treasuries in the first place? So what you're thinking of is just simply between banks where you got to realize that a lot of the lending they do to corporations, and the corporations aren't putting up uh, treasuries most likely to get the dollar liquidity. Um, they're, those banks are giving them the loan just based on their balance sheet and their P and L and, and their assets. So just like when you would get a mortgage on your house, you're able to use pretty much the house as collateral because they've got to lean on the loan. You're not posting treasuries to get that mortgage from Bank of America. So what I was talking about in that video is just bank to bank, but you've got to realize that a lot of those dollars that are being created are, in fact, most of the dollars I would argue that are being created are being created to... Uh, I don't know if to facilitate growth is the right way to say it, but they're really these loans that are going to corporations where the treasuries probably aren't part of the transaction as far as collateral. And so then the, the corporations are paying them back and then they have, uh, you know, dollars that may come into the bank as a result. And then they can go ahead and use those dollars, those profit, to go ahead and buy treasuries and then to increase or to manage their balance sheet in that way. Remember, if velocity increases, then the amount of dollars in the system uh, can service far more debt. So there's, there's a lot of variables right there, I think is the best way to answer the question. But you've got to look at variables outside of just interbank lending and interbank liquidity, which is what really what I was focusing on with that, with that video. What do you think of the fact that Campbell Harvey, who invented the yield curve indicator recently said, he has reason to believe it is full. Well, I don't know why he's saying that. I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to hear his rationale there. But that's good. That's good. Because remember what I was saying, everyone's on one side of the boat and we need to wait for them to get on that other side of the boat before the market does the old rug pull. I mean, what better way to get people on the whole no landing than say, hey, the guy that invented the yield curve, for heaven's sake, says that we're not going to have a recession. If that doesn't mark a top, I mean, that that's like a magazine cover of the, you would just need this on the, cover of the economist and you would know definitively that we were most likely going into a recession within the next few weeks <laughs> so i but i would bottom line is i'd have to hear his rationale Yeah. 
if I were to inherit a quarter million dollars, what would I do with it? I mean, same thing. It, it wouldn't matter if I had a quarter million or 2.5 billion or 25,000. I'd still invest the same way. I just do that 10, 80, 10 portfolio that I talk about all the time where 10% is insurance with gold and 80% I'm just buying stuff that pays me to own it. And that's when it's fully invested. You know, right now I might have a lot, a large portion of that in cash and T-bills. And then the other 10% just in speculative assets that I think have some good asymmetry, even if they don't pay me to own them. Why? Why isn't there pushback on the Fed changing the basket CPI? I mean, there's never any pushback when they change that. Think, look at how many times they've changed it since the 1980s. Right off the top of my head, I can remember three or four times. I mean, they just changed it last year, for heaven's sakes. So now they're like changing it almost every single year, it seems like. And the media never pushes back. So... I mean, if the if the media did push back, I get, I think that's what would be surprising. Why is the Federal Reserve transferring money to the top four banks in the U.S.? And the Swiss banking, okay, we already. I heard BRIC nations are having a meeting in August to discuss alternative currency to the dollar. Do you see gold going up if they do? Mm, not really. I don't think that gold right now is really trading on anything other than interest rate differentials. So I think once the market believes the Fed will start lowering rates, assuming that other central banks are talking hawkishly and increasing rates. If that happens, then you're going to see the dollar really go down, and that's when gold's going to go up, unless we have some sort of unforeseen event, black swan. But if we have a big black swan event, usually gold goes down, not up, because everyone's selling it because that's the only liquid thing on their balance sheet. It's usually the response to the black swan that makes gold go up significantly. But that in and of itself, based on how gold has traded and the variables that have made it move over the last two years, I would not assume that anything the BRICS do would impact the price of gold significantly. Definitely a cross current, but one that isn't powerful enough to move the needle at least right now or in, in uh, maybe I should say more specifically in 2023. How could a free energy device change the world? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, I don't even know how to answer that question because life is energy. The economy is energy. If you had unlimited free energy, I mean, there's nothing you could do to benefit society more than to have unlimited free energy. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So I, I'm trying to think of something in human history that would have been that much of a game changer. I can't think of one. Maybe fire. I, I don't even think fire. No, I, I can't think of one. That the, the, That would... I mean, the impact that would have on the poor and middle class globally would be mind-boggling, mind-boggling.
in fact, I would go so far without getting into religious topics, you know, because, you know, I was brought up Christian. I would still consider myself a Christian today. So I don't want to go down that path. I want to keep it specifically about macro. But without going down that path, if you just said, George, here's a magic wand. You've got one thing that you could do for the entire world that would benefit it the most. You get one wish or one you know swoop of the magic wand. What would it be? It'd be that free energy, free unlimited energy. There's really no way to articulate how to the how much that would benefit society, how much that would benefit humanity. How would I structure a seller financing deal? Two unit building, apartment upstairs, commercial building, seller wants 175. I mean, I'd have to know more about it, but uh, I'm assuming you're the seller. So my only advice to you would be if I was doing a seller financing, just obviously make sure you're, <laughs> you're the number one lien holder. You don't want to compete with other people if they default. That would be my only advice. Okay, guys, bear with me. Just looking for another question. A lot of these are repeats. Uh, thoughts on Manizales? I've never been there. Everyone I, everyone that goes there, I, I hear a lot of good things about it. Armenia, I've been there, but it, that was way back in like 2014. I just don't know why you'd go to any of those either of those areas if you could go to Medellin. But it depends on what your interests are. Maybe you don't like big cities or something like that. But as far as just whether people, food, cost of living, access to cultural stuff, I, I just, I don't think you can beat Medellin. I mean, just as an example, today I was doing pretty much every activity you could think of disc golf i played golf normal golf i was going to play tennis but that got canceled out the, the country club here um you know almost every night on the weekends i do some sort of you know go to live music or uh, go to the performing arts center here that i mean sometimes i'll go to ballet symphony uh, i went to mma fights just like the ufc the other day here in medellin You've got the classical game. You got the soccer, the football games. You, you just, you're just not going to have. You're not going to be able to go to the symphony in in Manizales or <laughs> Armenia. Now, maybe you say, George, who cares? I don't like that stuff. And that's just that may be not your that that might not be your cup of tea, and that's totally cool. But those are my thoughts. And also, too, you know, I have to travel a lot and no international airport. That would that's a deal breaker for me. Okay, I see a lot of repeat questions, guys. Just bear with me. If I don't see any original questions here, I might call it an early evening. So I've got to focus on Rebel Capitalist Pro live stream. Let me go all the way to the bottom here. Can I ride a horse? No. <laughs> Easy question. I'm a motorcycle guy, not a horse guy. I have no, what kind of safe would I have? I have no idea. I don't know anything about safes. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, I guess that's it. Not we had a few really good questions this evening, so I guess I'll just kind of go ahead and call it a night. Uh, like I said, I had a long day today, so a little bit tired, and I want to get ready for the Rebel Capitalist Pro live stream that we got coming up here in 15 minutes. So I guess on that note, I want to encourage you to check out rebelcapitalistlive.com. That's the live event that we've got in May, Orlando, May 12th through the 14th. And it's going to feature some incredible speakers like my good friends Peter Schiff, Lynn Alden, Chris McIntosh, Robert Barnes, Mike Maloney, just to name a few. And go to, so you got to go there now to get your tickets. They go up in price as we get closer to the event. So you can check that out at rebelcapitalistlive.com. Uh, let's do some shout outs and then I'll get ready for the Rebel Capitalist Pro live stream here. We've got Wayne Smith, Cooper Cox, Doc Fish, Easy Game 0510, All Nighter Hider in the house, RRJJ, Trust Only Online, Anthony Court, my good buddy Anthony. Hope you're well, my friend. Market Mania in the house. Spock at 2024, JC Ryder, Chris Sauer, Life Stuff, Moody's in the house, Moody the Millennial, the one and only, Ralph Martinez, Two Wheel Freedom, Guillermo Sierra, Deeps, Christopher Kieran, Drew. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your evening. For those of you who watch the Rebel Capitalist channel, very exciting stuff. We're changing up the format a bit. Tomorrow is going to be the first video that we're uploading in this new kind of editing style. Check it out. It'll come out tomorrow, probably mid-afternoon. So as always, enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you in the next video.